Hi everyone, this is Melissa with Two Peas in a Bucket, and I'm here to share another week of documenting life with you. I'm starting out in a slightly different place than usual. I'm on the computer again. If you've seen some of my earlier tutorials, I've shown a few items on the computer, like how to use Lightroom and things like that, and I've had a request to do more computer-oriented tutorials. So I'm going to start off this video by showing how to make some really easy photo collages if you don't have Lightroom or don't have any really sophisticated software. If the computer part is not your thing, there's also a layout that goes along with this and you should be seeing a timestamp on your screen about right now that will tell you where the actual scrapbooking will start. But for now we're going to look at making collages in an app called PicFrame. Now I'm showing you this on my computer and I use a Mac. But this app is available for several platforms. It's not expensive, it's only 99 cents on the Apple App Store. But if you go to PicFrame's website, you'll see that it not only is it available on the iOS App Store, it's available for the Mac App Store, so you can use it on your computer desktop. It's available for Android and Blackberry. In fact, the only platform that it's not really available for is a Windows desktop. Windows users, I would advise you to use an app called Photosheet. Um, since I don't have a Windows computer to show that app to you on, I'm going to link it up in the, in the show notes for this lesson. But this app should be available for most of you on the platform that you're using. Now this is almost exactly what it looks like when it's on the phone. It, the button clicks and some of the menu items may be in slightly different places, but the general workflow is the same. Now a lot of people say that they can't print smaller photos or do the collages because they don't print their photos at home. But guess what? I don't print my photos at home either. I send everything off to a developer. Or if I do occasionally print a photo at home, I only have a 4x6 photo printer. So I have to format everything just like I'm sending it off to a developer anyway. So I'm in the same boat as all of you, and I still do all these cute little collages and small photos, and I just thought I would share the way that I do that. So this is the PicFrame interface, and I also have a folder full of example photos that I'm going to use for these collages. And I love the view that you can get in Mac like this, where I can flip through the photos and see a little thumbnail, so I'm going to switch to that. And in PicFrame, you have choices for lots and lots of different layouts for your photos. I think you can put up to nine photos or maybe more in one frame. You also have choices of background colors, images, borders, and photo shapes. And also selections for aspect ratio. So right now I have everything set up to where it would be a square photo. And to show you an example of that, I have three photos, three vertical photos from my niece's birthday party. And if I were to choose three vertical slots, all I have to do is click on that arrangement and then drag photos from the folder into each spot. Now, if you're not looking at it in this view, all you have to do is grab the file name and drag it over. Now, if you don't like the way it's framed up inside of the borders, just grab with your mouse, hold and drag around until you have things framed up the way you like them. Now with a square layout, these photos look really, really squished. But one of the really cool things about PicFrame is that you can choose the aspect ratio. This is a square, so it's a one to one ratio. If you want a four to three, you can click on that and get a slightly wider image that lets you see more of each picture. And if you want to send these off to a developer straight out of the app, then you'll want to click here or tap there on your phone and choose either 3 to 2 or 2 to 3, which is the equivalent of your 4 to 6 ratio. So I'll show you what these would look like on a 4 by 6 picture. And to save this, all you have to do is click or tap the Save button. Make sure that your resolution is print quality and hit save. On your phone you can choose to save it to your camera roll. On my computer I'm just going to save it to my desktop. And once that's finished I can open it up. And easy as that, this is a 4x6 ready 
print, all you have to do is upload this to your developer. You aren't limited to just having photos that are all the same size, of course. If you like, you can choose a layout that has one vertical and two horizontal photos, and I'm going to do that here. But I'm going to use a different set of photos that are in the correct orientations. So I will just click these and drag them right over the ones that are already there. Yes, my niece had a pool party and she was adorable, but I don't know if you can tell from here, the water was really cold and her lips were actually turning blue, but she absolutely would not get out of the pool. It was cute and funny all at the same time. So I'm going to put these in there and you can see I can drag them. Not only can I drag them around to position them, but I can also zoom in and out. So this is a really quick and easy way to also crop your photos as you're putting them into the collage. Now I told you you could change backgrounds and some other items and I'll quickly run you through that though most of the time I just leave things with a white background. If you click on the color palette here you can choose lots of different options. So your size is your border size so you just drag this in and out to change this to change the width of these white areas. If you want to round the corners, you can drag this to get the radius that you would like for the rounded sections. If you want to change the color or the pattern in the background, those options are here as well. And like I said, most of the time I just leave everything as white and leave them as square photos and take the defaults because it's just really easy. Um, so I'll go ahead and save that one as well. And then I will show one more example in PicFrame using four horizontal photos, but I'm going to save them as a square because in a second I'm going to flip over to Photoshop and show you how to get a non 4x6 photo ready to print at a developer. So this is for rectangular photos and I'm going to switch this back to a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. Go ahead and center these up the way that I would like them and save. So we have done three collages really quickly and really easily here and so now I'm going to take this square one and open it up in Photoshop. Now I'm using the full version of Photoshop, but this method is almost exactly the same as what you would do in Photoshop Elements. The first thing you want to do is create a brand new 4x6 canvas to work on. I'm going to change my units over to inches just to make things easier and type in 6 for width and height at 4 and change the resolution to 300 dpi. This is a fresh blank 4x6 photo. Now out of the app, this image is actually much larger than 4 inches across. So we want to size that down to fit onto this canvas in the background. And there are several ways to do that. I'm going to share my two favorite ways. The easiest for me is to use the crop tool. Now again, this is exactly the same way you'll do it in Photoshop Elements. Click on the crop tool and at the top, boxes for the width and the height will appear. Let's say you want a 3 by 3 inch photo. We already have 3's in both of these. You would just type those dimensions into these boxes and then take your crop tool and starting in one corner of the photo click, hold your mouse button down and drag across the photo as you select. So we selected the entire image. All I have to do now is hit the enter or the return button and it automatically has sized that down to 3 by 3 inches at a resolution. I should have pointed this out earlier. The resolution here is filled into 300, which is the same as the resolution for that brand new 4 by 6 canvas that we created just a minute ago. So I'm going to take this image now and copy it and paste it into this canvas. To copy it, I will just simply select Edit and I thought select. To copy it, I'm just going to click, I'm going to hit Command or Control A and you see this marquee has appeared around and then Command or Control C. Now you can also go to Edit and Copy on the menu if you don't like using the control keys on the keyboard. And then on here, Edit and Paste. 
And now we have that collage that's at 3x3 three three on a 4x6 canvas. And all you have to do now is go to File and Save and save this image as a JPEG. Upload it to your developer. When it comes back, trim this out and you're good to go. Now if doing all of this in Photoshop seems to be a little tedious, it can get that way after a while and that's why I do print square photos like this through Lightroom. It automates a lot of this and makes life a whole lot easier. And I do have a video I've already filmed on that. It was part of my Lightroom for Project Life tutorial in February. And I will also link that up in the show notes for this, for this episode. Now there is one other way that you can resize this image. So let me get back to where it was larger. And if you want, you can go into the image, image size and control the size from here. You can just simply type in the values that you want in this box. So a resolution of 300 and a width of 3 inches and it automatically has the aspect ratio linked where it preserves the proportions. So height filled in at 3 automatically and then click OK. Exact same results as using the crop tool. So those are quick and easy ways to make collages that are 4x6 ready or to take photos that aren't 4x6 and get them ready to print at an off-site developer. So with all of that done, let me go and set up to show you the scrapbooking portion of this week's video. So I don't know about you guys, but right now my life's getting a little bit real in terms of being busy. I know for many of you, the kids are back in school. For me, my husband is back in school for the last semester of his master's program, and it just makes everyone's life really hectic. So you have to maximize your scrapbooking time. And I'm lucky that I have really become comfortable with my project life process and it takes me a little less than an hour, which is a perfect, perfect time point for me to put a layout together. And so today I'm going to show you exactly how that process goes and some things that I did to speed it up this time around, but still make it enjoyable. Because while we do like to get layouts finished, let's face it, we also need to enjoy actually putting them together. So the layout I'm about to show you took about an hour and a lot of the prop parts I'm showing in real time, except for just some parts where I pause it to make some design decisions about product or to stop and type and print my journaling. So let's go ahead and dig into that. I always start out my layouts by laying the photos out across the page protector to try to get a good balance. And you'll see in a minute when I start laying out the collage photos, like the ones I showed you how to make just a bit earlier in this video, that they help to put something heavy in those 4x6 pockets without completely filling it up. And someone asked on the question thread about how to get kind of artsy while still getting lots of photos in, and those collages are my answer for that because they let me put several photos in one slot but leave just a few inches on the edge if I want to do maybe a little bit of watercolor or just something a little artsy. Now to make this layout go a little bit more quickly, I'm going to start with these items from Basic Gray. These are the RSVP, RSVP capture items. And I've chosen just a few journaling cards from both the Waterfall Pack and from the Snippets Card Pack to fill in a few spots. To make this layout go quickly, I decided to use the RSVP items as my starter color palette, mostly because my niece Sophie in the photos from my pre-birthday party was wearing a really, really funky shade of purple pants, and they're of course adorable on her, but really, really hard to match in scrapbooking supplies. So I was glad that I actually had these photos that are from way back in March that I had saved waiting for the perfect supplies. Now after I used all the journaling cards that I could from the capture pack, I went back through my stash of journaling cards to pick some from other collections that match that same color scheme. The green actually matches some of the cards from the blush Project Life Core Kit, and it also happened to match the green in one of my photos. So I chose, this is one of the bifold journaling cards, but I'm using it just as a plain 4x6 to balance out that green on the other side. Now I don't have a lot of full core kits, in fact I don't really have any because they have so many duplicate cards that some friends and I got together and split them up. So if you love the look of those cards, that's a great way to go. 
This card on the top left is from the Pebbles Lakeside journaling pad. And Lakeside actually also has some shades of purple, but I mostly chose this one because it matched the aqua, the pink, and the orange. Neutral ledger prints like this Life is Good card are always great, and I'm off to the side actually right now trimming that down to 4x3. But it's from one of the Pebbles Family Ties journaling card packs. So I'm just going to use that as one of my journaling cards, and I'll actually let the journaling flow from it over onto the capture card from the RSVP that's right next to it. Now that I have photos in place and journaling cards in place, the next step is to pull some pattern paper to fill in a few spots that don't quite fill up their entire slots, especially those 4x6 collages. So I'll start with this Aqua Stripe from Dear Lizzie Lucky Charm. I just pulled out some of my older 6x6 pads. And also these yellow prints that match that yellow there, a little bit of yellow in the flower to kind of balance that yellow onto the other side. And these are both from one of the My Mind's Eye collectible 6x6 pads. And that print from my iPhone screenshot was just a little bit smaller than 4x3, so I'm going to back it with a piece of paper and then embellish down the side. After getting all of the major pieces in place, I like to go ahead and put my journaling down before I start embellishing. And also like to go ahead and stick everything down just so it doesn't move around and drive me crazy. And I stuck most everything down but forgot this one card, so I'll go ahead and get it adhered as well. And then we'll pull out some embellishments and start playing. Now there is a lot of color on this, and you can see that I've tried to balance that color. I've tried to balance the aqua on both sides, some yellow on both sides, that purple is all around, green on both sides. And with all that color, I thought I would start off with some sort of neutral looking embellishments and pull in some larger items to start building clusters from. So these are Lux Stars. They're gold foil on white print from Pink Paisley. And I'm just scattering them around the layout, looking for empty spots that I know I want to add an embellishment cluster. And by cluster, I mean something really, really simple. And you'll see what I mean by that in a little bit. But just adding these as a starting off point or a good base. Besides the open areas of journaling cards, my other favorite places to embellish, as you can see, are at the join of a photo collage, kind of where all of the borders meet, and also at the edge of a photo, or if it's a full 4x6 photo, in one of the corners if there's a little bit of dead space. So I've placed stars in all of those sorts of areas across the page, and now I'm going to pull out these vellum tapes. These are also by Basic Gray but they're from a slightly older collection, although older is its a really relative term. They're as older as in still in the store, but you know, from a slightly older release or older in my stash for several years. And these are older in store terms. But they're from the, from the Knee Highs and Bowties collection, which I pulled out because it has a lot of the same colors as RSVP, including that sort of pinkish purple. And I'm just going to use a few of these vellum tapes either as a final decoration because it's actually the only other thing I'm going to add to this It's My Party card. Or as more of a base, like here, to help extend the base for an embellishment cluster and fill in just a little bit more space of the open area on the bottom of that journaling card. And I almost used that pink heart, but since they run vertically and it would have been laying horizontally, I decided to go with this orange herringbone print instead. And I really love these tapes, and Basic Gray has made them for several different collections because you get just a tiny little strip of each design, so you're not left with an entire huge roll of washi tape. And you just get little snippets to use here and there, and it's really easy to use up, and it doesn't hang around your stash for too long. So I'm just looking to see if there's any other places to add these items. And some of these tapes are cut into really cute little shapes, like these translucent vellum hearts and I'm pulling some of the aqua and pink ones to add to my embellishment clusters at the center of the photo collages. So I'll just add a couple of those kind of layered underneath the stars. And since I've done two on the right hand page I need to put at least one on the left so I'll stick it up on that Pebbles journaling card. And this is another thing I do to make the layouts go a little bit faster, is instead of taking each pocket as its own little mini masterpiece layout, which I don't have time for, 
I just take the entire layout as a whole and try to balance it across the entire page. That gives me the chance to do things like take one or two pockets and do something a little bit more special to them. Like this let's eat cake that I actually stitched through the word cake to make it look like it had been scribbled out and I'm putting Froyo over it instead. I'm just a little bit of backstory. I've already scrapbooked the photos from my actual birthday, but my family came down the Saturday before to actually celebrate with me a little bit early. And we all went out for Chipotle and then went out for frozen yogurt. So a lot of these photos are from that. And this is actually, this week is the perfect poster child for the reason that I'm not stressed about being caught up at all and why I will scrapbook weeks out of order if I feel like it. Because even though these photos are from way back in March, the perfect product for them didn't hit my desk until just a few weeks ago. Speaking of perfect products, there's a lot of products right now that have this really interesting shade of purple. I think it's actually kind of an aubergine, sort of a, a reddish purple. And Basic Gray has it in RSVP. And it's also in Cart Postal. And these are the little page flags, which are sort of like post-it notes. And you get a ton of each design on in the package. And it only sticks on the very end, so I went ahead and added a little bit of extra adhesive just so it would stick all the way down and not stick up too much. But I really love these flags, and since I have one on one side of the page, I'm going to see if it'll work on the other. But I think that that A is just too repetitive and B is really, really high contrast and calls a lot of attention to itself with the yellow. So I'm going to switch over to a different type of embellishment. I love these little word stickers also for adding to clusters. And building embellishment clusters for me is just as easy as this. It's pull out a lot of little bitty embellishments that I really love, and then just start layering them up. And I know that scrapbookers like formulas and numbers and exact sizes. So when I do one of these clusters, I usually put three elements. So you can see in this one, I have the chipboard star. I have the vellum heart and then I have a small word sticker. Now I don't always follow that rule, but a lot of times you will see me put items in groups of three. I covered stamping in an earlier layout and I just got these new stamps in by Chamel. They're exclusive to two peas and I love these because they have phrases like fail and what and just the things that are for non-perfect days. But then they also have some really, really generic and really usable elements like this star border. And I'm going to use it in place of one of those page flags that I had been thinking about using on that and stamp it in an aqua because I think I need to bring a little bit more aqua to this side of the page. So this is a teal damask stamper from Prima. It's one of their chalk inkers and I will just stamp it down as the grounding element for the cluster here. And this is where you will see me break that three item rule because technically that stamping could be considered one item but I'm going to layer three enamel dots over the top of it and I, I love 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 enamel dots I find myself ordering a package of every different color combination that comes through the shop but I use them so often that I don't feel guilty about that at all and these just came in my latest order so I'm actually kind of proud of myself for going ahead and using them up so this cluster at the top only had two elements and I'm adding another dot to make it three just to balance that out a little bit more aqua in there. Just a tiny little bit of shininess. Just love these. And I think that's all the enamel dots for this layout. I have just a few more embellishments from my pile of tiny things that I pulled out that would work with the RSVP collection. And one of those is this set of puffy stickers from Amy Tan's Yes Please. This is from her winter CHA and a few of the elements are actually almost that same shade of purple. So it seems to be kind of trending, but in really, really small amounts, which I think is great because it makes a lot of collections from different manufacturers and different designers work really, really well together. So I've pulled out a smile puffy sticker and I'm going to line up three little chevrons pointing down at it. I'm just searching for one more that sort of matches. And I think I will go with a green and call that card good. And when I scrapbook my Project Life pages, I really do just move this quickly. 
I don't rush through to the point where I don't enjoy things, but when I do have some cute embellishments in my hand, like these label stickers from the new My Mind's Eye Cut and Paste, I make sure that I don't spend too long trying to analyze where they all go. You really just have to trust your gut, and if it looks good to you, then just go with it. And here's a look at the finished layout this week. And your creative challenge is to set a timer for an hour or less or whatever time period works for you and try to complete your, complete your layout within that time period. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic weekend.